Hello everyone, today we are going to learn how to initiate and titrate insulin based on different regimes. If you want to know more about the types of insulin available, do check out the previous video about it, I will put a link in the description down below. 50-90% of type 2 diabetes patients will need insulin after 5-10 to 10 years from the initial diagnosis. When should we consider starting our patients on insulin? Patients with severe hyperglycemia, for example, HbA1c more than 10%, fasting plasma glucose or fasting blood sugar more than 13, or 2 hours postprandial glucose more than 18. Patients who are symptomatic, especially with osmostic symptoms such as unintentional weight loss, constant feeling of thirst. Patients who are acutely ill and under stress, those who are going for surgery will need insulin for better glycemic control. Patients that have uncontrolled glucose despite maximal oral hypoglycemic agents, will also need insulin. How do we start insulin? Of course insulin regimes should be individualized, however, there are several common regimes practiced. Insulin therapy may be initiated as augmentation, using basal insulin, combined with oral hypoglycemic agents. Or as replacement, premixed twice daily regime or basal bolus four to five times daily regime. First, let us talk about basal insulin. Basal insulin is a good addition for patients who are on maximal oral agents and still could not achieve desired glycemic control. Basal insulin can be commenced at a single low dose of 8 to 10 units once a day, with either an intermediate or long-acting insulin. They are usually given at bedtime, targeting the morning fasting plasma glucose. The starting dose can be estimated at 0.1 unit per kilogram and titrated weekly based on fasting glucose level. This is a table serving as a guide to titrate basal insulin. Weekly titration base on fasting blood glucose can be done by increasing or reducing 2 to 4 units or maintaining the same dose. Watch out for hypoglycemia for all patients on insulin. During follow-up, we can use HbA1c as a guide for treatment response. If HbA1c target is not within desired range, assess patient's compliance to the therapy, check on their insulin injection technique and ask about hypoglycemia symptoms, especially in elderly patients and those with multiple comorbidities. If target is still persistently not achieved, or patient's total insulin's dose requirement exceeds 25 units, we can consider switching the regime to twice-daily biphasic insulin therapy. Pre-mixed insulin consists of both rapid and intermediate acting insulin incorporated in a single preparation. It covers both postprandial glucose excursion and basal insulin needs. You may begin with a total dose of 0.4 units per kilogram per day. Two-thirds of the dose can be used pre-breakfast and the remaining one-third used at pre-dinner. SMBG or self-monitoring of blood glucose is highly recommended. Do not forget to also off sulfonylureas and pioglitazones if your patient is on them to reduce risk of hypoglycemia. Titration of premixed insulin should be based on the fasting and per dinner glucose level. Titrate until stable. This picture shows the action of the twice daily premixed insulin regime throughout the day. Prandial insulin is represented in yellow, and basal insulin in green. Titration of premixed insulin should be based on the fasting and per dinner glucose. Again, this table serves as a guide to aid with titration of insulin. Lastly, the basal bolus regime. Basal bolus insulin regime involves both basal and prandial insulin. This regime is the most physiological regime, however, due to the amount of injections that is required for the patient, an understanding and agreement should be established with the patient before commencing. The starting total dose for a day is 0.4 unit per kilogram per day. 20% of the total dose can be given during meal time using rapid or short-acting insulin. The remaining 40% of total dose can be given as basal insulin using intermediate or long-acting insulin. Basal bolus regime is suitable for patients who are doing home blood glucose monitoring. It is also for patients who need intensive insulin therapy for example during pregnancy, patients with frequent hypoglycemia, patients with type 1 diabetes mellitus or patients with severe insulin deficiency. This picture shows the action of basal bolus insulin regime throughout the day. The prandial insulin given three times before three meals taken in a day is represented in yellow, and the basal insulin given before bed in green. For titration of basal bolus insulin regime, 
the fasting, pre-breakfast glucose target should be fixed first by adjusting the pre-bed intermediate or long-acting insulin, followed by titration of prandial insulin based on pre- and post-meals glucose levels. All patients on insulin should be advised for self-monitoring of blood glucose with a glucometer. Patients should also be empowered to self-adjust insulin dose based on their own profile and blood glucose level. In summary, there is no hard and fast method to achieve the desired sugar control. All insulin regime should be individualized. Building a good rapport between patients, doctors, diabetic pharmacists, and dietitians are also key to managing a diabetic patient. A quick tip, do not overlook drinks when getting a diet history, it is commonly underestimated. Thank you for watching this video. If you like the content, do not forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Have a great week.